Well, hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, along with my teaching partner, Max Marciano. Max, how are you, brother? Hello, I'm great. How are you, Dennis? I'm good, man. I'm really good. I'm very excited about today. Today is episode one of the chat. And so um, we're very excited about this. It's a new program that we're launching. Um, it's a smaller uh, window of time. Most of our chats will only be 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes long. And we'll really try to focus only on one subject. And these are, you know, kind of like little pieces of information that uh, hopefully you'll find you'll find important. And as usual, we're going to have some fun. You know, I tried to get our little coffee shop set up here and uh, got my drinking mug, you know. And uh, yeah, absolutely. So... It's been a crazy week on social media. <laughs> I mean, when isn't it a crazy week on social media, oh, though? Brother, 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 I tell you, I've seen things talking. Uh, I want to talk about rice water in one episode because that's a big deal now. That's, uh, yeah, rice water is really huge. It's making a, a big deal. Uh, I noticed I mean, that, yeah, I noticed that today on social media because I had a little time to burn. So I went on social media and I noticed there was a big controversy over should the hair be dirty or should the hair be clean before you color it? And believe it or not, Max, there are still people who believe that dirty hair is better for hair color. So we won't go there. I'm just giving nope. you the highlights of some of these nope. things. But uh, in any case, um, it's a plethora of information that we get to deal with. And uh, I think what we're going to deal with today is we're going to talk a little bit about naturalizing versus neutralizing. Ooh. Means, ooh, yeah. Naturalizing versus neutralizing. People go, what in the heck are you talking about? And um, really, uh, because so many of us didn't get this piece of information, uh, it slipped by us. And yeah. so, yeah. I, I want to really talk about this today because if you come to our programs, you'll see that we, we talk about two different color wheels, two different approaches to formulating a color. One would be to neutralize that. That's what we were all taught, right? In beauty school, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's red, use green. If it's orange, use blue. If it's yellow, use violet. And, and I think a, a lot of times as hairdressers, you know, we're, that's instinctively, we immediately think that's what we have to do when we're going to right. cho choose a shade to do something, right? you know, in the, well, in the coloring process. I think it's because we call ourselves artists, but when it comes to the process, we are so anal. <laughs> it's like, I can't go there. I have to do step one, step two, step three. It's just yeah. so funny. And, and that's well, why many times we don't get the results we're looking for. And we definitely don't get neutralizing, period. We don't get neutralizing. We call it neutralizing, but you're not neutralizing anything because yeah. you don't have enough, you don't have enough in a one step color process. You don't have enough pigment in your color to neutralize anything by the time you get through the process. <clears throat> right. But that's, yeah, what, well, that's, that's what we call I think it. We're, we're polarized. <laughs> in our industry with there's either rule followers or right. rule breakers. Right. And, you know, neither one of them is particularly more advantageous of than, than another, you right. know, each one, each, each one of those sort of camps comes with its own, you know, pitfalls. And when it comes to, you know, naturalizing and neutralizing it's kind of the same thing so let's let's start from the beginning then and, all right uh, talk about what is naturalizing dennis all right naturalizing is when we formulate for a color process it is leaving some of the warmth that's contributed by the hair because we're going to use it in the finished result we want to create... leave warmth in the hair we are. 
because I thought you weren't supposed to do that. I'm, yeah. I'm joking, but that's what we're that's what we're taught. You're right. Because here's sometimes what I find is interesting is that not everyone wants to eliminate all the warmth or reflect, and that's what gives you reflect. A little bit of warmth will give you reflect. And if you look at at hair itself, you know, a natural level seven blonde, a natural level seven blonde has warmth. Now, I'm not talking about a level seven ash blonde. I'm talking about a natural level seven blonde. A light brown head of hair naturally has warmth. So warmth is not terrible. It's that sometimes we want it in our finished result. Sometimes we try to diminish it. And I think we do more diminishing than we do anything else. So when I want to naturalize my formula, I'm going to approach my formulation completely different. I'm not even going to use the color wheel, Max. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're not. I'm not. You know, you see that equation uh, right next to the color wheel. It says you mm -hmm. see one big B, blue B, uh, two red R's, and three yellow Y's. That's I the universe. It. That's the universal formula. And what that formula makes is brown, because all hair is brown. All people are some gradation of brown. <laughs> brown is really the world that we work in. And so when I want to create something that's more natural, I take, instead of looking at my color wheel, I'll just simply write that equation out on a piece of notepad paper. And I'll, I'll look at my target level. Those steps are still in place. Identify your start, identify your target. Those are still the same basic steps we do. But when I look at my target, I want to see what kind of warmth this is going to contribute. Let's say it is a level seven, and let's say it's going to contribute orange. So I look in that equation. How many times can I find a combination that makes the color orange? Now, unless you understand hair color code, you may have a challenge with this, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, B's, R's, and Y's. I'm sure many of you have heard people talk about it. So we know that orange is equal parts of red and yellow. So how many times can I find a pair, a red and yellow pair in that equation? Well, if you look at it, there's only two, two times, right. right? And so I'm left, after I eliminate those, I'm left with a blue and a yellow. Now, what does it, what color do we make when we mix blue and yellow? Green. Green. So instead of using blue, which is what the color wheel would tell me to use, I'm going to use green. So green is going to control some of the warmth because it's 50% blue, but it's going to leave some remaining warmth so that the hair has more of a natural reflect, so that the hair does not look artificial, does not look flat. That's what we call flat. Flat means... It's flat. It has no, yeah. it contributes nothing. And so, so that's the difference in using a naturalizing to formulate my color versus neutralizing. Now, there's nothing wrong with using the color wheel to neutralize. That's what we call it. As long as you realize you're never going to neutralize in one step. <laughs> you'll, so, you'll, ref, you'll refine it. You'll refine it more than if you use the naturalizing equation. Sure. But when you're naturalizing, the universal equation then is kind of your blueprint for what it you're going to work off of in order to figure out what to add into the mix to right. create that brown. <clears throat> exactly. That natural tone. And then Dennis, so then on, in, in neutralizing, you know, like I, I've worked with some people who will mix, you know, a half an ounce of this and a quarter an ounce of that and three capsules of this and a bunch of concentrate. And, you know, uh, they, they light a candle, say a prayer, and they put, they put that mixture on the hair in an effort to neutralize something. But what I always see happen is it typically looks 
you know, muddy, right, gray, almost, and <clears throat> also a lot deeper than the level that they were going for. Right. But to them, they they neutralized it because they buried all of that that warmth That's... in the hair. But essentially, like you know, it's not even really. It, it's like it's so much darker. It's you know not. It, it's almost like a nondescript. Right. Uh, see my face squinching up when I'm like describing yeah. it. I'm like, you know. Yeah. Sort of like <laughs> sipping vinegar. It's not yeah. not a pretty. It's not a pretty. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. And, and so it, it, go, it goes back to the theory, Max, that we teach is that you, the one thing you can't run from is background. I'm sorry. You can't run from that. I don't care who you are. I don't care what brand you use. You can't run from that. And every blended hair color has background of some degree. Right. And so every time I add another shade to my mix, I'm adding additional background until eventually with too much background, I have no tone. I, I completely bury my tone. And that's when we have to take them out in the bright sun to, or we put them under a ring light <laughs> to make it look like it has yep. some life in it. Other than that, it looks like um, it looks artificial. You know, anybody can put color on the hair. But to put color on the hair and make it look like Mother Nature did it, that, my friend, is the magic. And you can I do that. Love that. <laughs> well, and, and also knowing that. knowing why, why you're selecting that shade and exactly. why you're doing it and kind of coloring with intention, I think is really is really key too. Absolutely. You know, you, for for us, you know, as far as like Right. Knowing how to create a specific end result as opposed to just kind of guessing. Right. Absolutely. And that, that's why I, I have to laugh. <laughs> and sometimes I want to cry, but I laugh when I when I read these posts and people are using like five different shades in one bowl. Well, I, I don't care who you are. I mean, you have to have a great imagination because you're not going to see anything because you've killed everything that you were obviously trying to achieve. You know, I always use a quote from one of my wife's favorite chefs named Emerald Lagazzi. And he <laughs> says, he's always said, the genius is in simplicity. Yeah. You know, um, I know we are going to do um, a little uh, episode on mapping and we're going to show people where, I, I took a formula straight off of social media. And when you map it out and you, you break it down, you kind of go, oh, my God, I'm not even going to achieve what I was trying to achieve. Why? Okay. Because they took, they mixed four different colors together and you could have done it with one color and a concentrate. Right. And, and achieved a prettier result and still had a nice looking head of hair. I believe it. I believe it. So, you know, so I less, think is, the, less is more approach, right? Yeah. I think the important thing about this, what we want to share here is that you have more than one way to formulate your color. You can choose to leave tone and reflect. Okay. You can use to try to get rid of it. Whatever you prefer to do, you do you but understand that you have other options that are available to you. And I, I think that for us, you know, um, it is, it, you know, there, there's apples and oranges in the way they both work, you know, sure. one's apples, one's oranges, uh, you know, that, that makes a difference in the two, but you can use them both to formulate your color. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so anything else you want to say about this, Max? I mean, I think we've beat this dead horse. I think we have. Uh, look, I just want to talk a little bit about some upcoming programs that uh, people are asking about. Um, one we've got happening this coming Monday, February the 6th. It's called The Telltale Hair. Um, for those of you that really want to explore the hair that we work on, 
you know, I, I, it's amazing to me. I, I made a post this morning. It's amazing to me how many people spend their entire career working on hair with hair color, and yet they don't understand the very product, the very canvas that they're working on. You know, we call it our canvas, and yet we don't understand what it contributes or how it changes in a color process. We don't understand that <laughs> you're not removing anything when you use a color remover. Check out mm -hmm. Max's post from just a few days ago. You know, these things, I think, help ground us and give us solid, you know, understanding. And you know what comes from that? I believe is confidence. Sure. You know, I, I just like we talked about the two different ways of formulating, you gain confidence from that. So you formulate with intention. I think that's a great, great phrase. So the telltale here is February the 6th. If you're interested, we still have some spaces available. We would love to see you in that class. Uh, then on February the 28th, we are doing a class called The Science of It for all you science nerds who want to know how is hair color made. Uh, you will learn a lot of exciting things about hair color. You will also probably be disappointed in some of the <laughs> beliefs that you've had about how hair color works and how hair color is made and all of those things. Uh, so I think it's an interesting course to attend. It is a three hour program, so it's pretty in depth. And uh, I think you would enjoy it. And both of these are segments that we do in hair color school, uh, but we've had people say, well, can I just review one of these? Can I just review the hair story? Can I just review the hair color story? And so yeah. now we're making those available as well. So that's something to keep in mind, along with the fact that in March, we are again starting Hair Color School. It will be spring session 2022. Uh, we have had two great sessions, the fall session last year, and then the winter session, which we just finished just last week. Hair Color School is Hair Color School. It is four sessions. Uh, with homework between each class. So it's four weeks, 30 days, a month, uh, in, immersed in hair color information. You have three coaches. You have Max and I and Yvette Fontani, who is a phenomenal trainer and educator. And so you have all three of us on messaging 24-7. And so you can ask any questions you want. And there's been lots of that going on. So it's something for you to really think about um, we keep it small so that people get a really feeling of having that one-on-one -on -one attention. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Along with the fact that uh, we also have a program, and I don't have it up on our slides today, but I want to tell you all about it. Because a lot of our students that have gone to Formulation Foundation, Formulation Mashup, Principles of Color, and Hair Color School, we do give them mapping information. We do show them how we teach formulation and using how, how do you build a hair color map and all of these things. But for some of them, it's not enough. They want more. And so we have decided as a company, we are now going to create a standalone program called Map It Out. It's already up on our website and available. And it is a class where a two 90-minute sessions with a 30-minute break in between where we will go in-depth into formulating and building a color map and ways to help you in formulation. Basically, that's what it is. It helps you uh, kind of get a handle on where you're going when you're formulating a hair color. So it's not guesswork. So you're not standing at the color bar going, oh, which one will I use? You know, or you ask somebody's opinion, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So do you, do you want to say anything about color school and, and map it out, Max? I was just going to add, um, you know, if, if you guys really want to, number one, be in an accelerated learning environment for all things on the subject of hair structure, hair chemistry, hair color chemistry, and formulation and hair color schools for you. And then, you know, as far as mapping is concerned, if you want to have the most predictability with your 
and hair color results behind the chair. You definitely need to learn how to map. We touch on mapping as well in hair color school, and then we take it to the next level with our mapping program. And we will in the future have an advanced mapping program. So we are committed to really evolving and keeping this, you know, sort of technology, if you will, available. Because, you know, Dennis's mentor, you know, who dates back a, a few years prior. <laughs> yes, he does. Created this concept of mapping. And yeah. it has all been lost except for with Dennis here, you know, at Guru Nation. So we want to keep it alive because it's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, th th that's a great thing is that people don't realize that he created the simple mathematic system that was then used to program the Hunter Spectre Photometer. So that color chemists use in laboratories today when they formulate hair color. And so it's a great system. Um, I know there's hundreds of systems out there, but we know this is a system that will work. And because uh, because my book is coming out <laughs> this year, we figured we had to start fortifying that information because people are going to be reading the book and they're going to be saying, well, this is only like one page of formulation. Uh, I need sure. more. And so we wanted to make those kinds of things available. So uh, keep your eyes open. Uh, watch what's happening with us. If you follow us, it would be great to see you on Instagram. Uh, we always ask you to stay in touch with us. Uh, best way to stay in touch with us is you can go to Facebook. You can follow Guru Nation on Facebook. You can join Guru Hair Tribe, which is a private uh, brand neutral educational forum. Uh, you can also reach Max, if you wish, on Instagram. It's at Max M Hair, And you can reach me at Real Captain Color. And for those of you that don't know how to clean your cache or delete your cookies on your computer, uh, if you go to my bio on Instagram and click the link tree connection, it will take you directly to our educational catalog where you can see our offerings and also uh, make your purchase of your tuition. We also invite you to join us on YouTube. Uh, this program is being broadcast on YouTube as well as social media. And we thank all of our followers. Our viewership has really increased on YouTube. We're very excited. In fact, if uh, we go back and look at some of our videos, Max, we're actually getting commercials on our videos. So, so they must be paying attention to us. <clears throat> so yeah. we invite you to subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, the, just go down there below right down there, I think, <laughs> and subscribe. That way you'll get notification <clears throat> the minute that we post uh, a new broadcast. We're going to try and be uh, very um, up to date and stay in touch with the chat. We're also going to continue rabbit trails because we have a huge following on that program that we're doing. So we're very excited about 2022, what it brings for us. Uh, currently, as long as some of the things hold up, we are planning a actual in-person program in Chicago, Illinois at Creative Mix Hair Salon, the 17th and April 18th, two-day event. And um, we're looking forward to that. The reason I say as long as things hold up, it depends upon COVID-19 and travel restrictions and all that other stuff but in any case max it has been fun doing our first broadcast i really Great. enjoyed it yeah Hope, all the pleasure yeah hopefully those of you watching us today you have gained something a little piece of nugget a little piece of education remember that's the way we build our confidence one piece of information at a time and uh Please send us your response. If you're watching us on any social media, please drop some comments. Let us know. Does this really help you? Uh, do you share it with your friends? Um, all of those kinds of things help us know that we're on track and helping you discover your own personal genius. So until we see you again somewhere, everybody take care. I am Captain Color. I am out. Max, how about you? I'm out of here. You guys take right. care. Everybody, we'll see you. Take care. Bye-bye.